Okay, so a bit of background about myself. So I'm a Charming Draw Champ for short. Um, I'm an inner source uh, product manager and solution architect at City, uh, running about two inner source uh, projects over there. Um, we have a uh, vast adoption uh, of inner source um, in, in some of the and communities running at City. Um, uh, in the past, of course, I have been quite involved with open source uh, before joining the financial industry. I was very involved with open source advocacy uh, from Sri Lanka. I was doing a lot of Linux advocacy at the time when Linux needed convincing. Um, and also I, I contributed to Apache and Apache Web Services, learned a lot about the Apache way. And then uh, when the tsunami struck in 2004, I also led a project called a uh, humanitarian open source project called Sahana. So I have a look, quite a bit of exposure and also interacted with FSF and OSI uh, on a long time ago. Um, and I was very keen about inner source uh, when I was introduced by Claire and Denise and about the way of applying because I, I've always found it. I'm passionate about building great applications and I always found inner source and op the open source way to be a fantastic way of providing value, not just uh, in, in, in an exciting development model. So my talk today is about licensing. I think in open source, we have very good licensing and it enables open source. And I think we need this in inner source as well. So I'm going to talk about that and the work we're doing there. Um, and in terms of agenda, I want to talk about why it makes sense, uh, what the opportunity for inner source in financial institutions is. We have we are representing uh, an org, uh, which is under Linux Foundation called FinOS. Uh, where we do most of our work. Um, and then I want to talk about the inner source and the, the adopting the open source way in the financial uh, institutions, drawing some parallels about licensing. Um, and then we actually have created a tool uh, to help create a license. Uh, we originally wanted to have licenses, but it, it seems there's a lot of variances. So we created a generation tool. So I'll give a small demo of that as well. And then we can have some questions and answers. Okay, so uh, before that, uh, I'm really also representing FinOS, um, and uh, it is a financial uh, open source foundation under Linux Foundation, as mentioned. It creates a safe space uh, for financial institutions to collaborate. Uh, we have, a, I think, uh, Brittany uh, from Finime uh, was uh, yesterday who mentioned it as well. She's from the same SIG that I, we co lead together, uh, which is the inner source SIG uh, in FinOS. And Really, there's, it's a very re regulated industry, so there's a lot of controls uh, that we need to be sensitive to. Um, and um, FinOS effectively creates a safe space for us to discuss that on the Chatham House rules and a lot of um, uh, the ways that we, we collaborate to just make sure those we don't violate any of those regulations. Um, you're, However, everyone is welcome to join. It creates a bit safer space, but everyone is welcome to join our SIG meetings. Yeah, anyone, you can join in. It's all very open SIG meetings, but we have some clear rules in terms of how we conduct ourselves. Um, so I want to give a typical scenario. Uh, we, we Some of these large financial institutions and enterprises, one which I represent, which is City. Uh, you often find uh, this kind of scenario that I, I find. Um, they're so large that you have internal ecosystems and internal uh, uh, many internal applications. And uh, what you find is that you have your app and then you're depending on some internal uh, third-party tool, utility, API that somebody else is building within the organization. And then uh, to that, you also have upstream and downstream apps as well um, that you're utilizing. And then... Um, the scope of your dev team to get things done is clearly your app, you own that, and you can do things around it. But really, your project scope is much wider, right? And what you have to do to get your job done is much wider. And you have to work with these other teams and other internal products to get your job done. And that requires often a negotiation of priorities uh, with them. Um, and you have, to, you have to explain why your priority is more important than the other's priority, um, and you you have to work negotiate that out, and might require some sponsorship or whatever. And what happens is sometimes that it creates this kind of situation where people say, "Okay, I can't get my job done because I, I'm not getting the required priority from that up, you know tool utility and so forth." 
and they start creating their uh, their own thing to do it and that starts a way, little bit wastage by reinventing the wheel so people don't want to do it for the sake of it but sometimes they have to to meet their deadlines um so what i feel in this kind of scenario what inner source provides that on and really the open source way the open source way which we've adopted open source tools which you know have applied the open source way to create fantastic products now can we do that same thing within the organization? So if we adopt the open source way, this scenario changes, right? Um, and you effectively create a, a much uh, a porous boundary with those downstream applications. Uh, feature requests and prioritization becomes pull requests, which are much easier and less work to review. Um, and then you're sharing that. Kind of, so for overall for the organization, it's very healthy because you're sharing this this code is being reviewed. It's not been done in isolation. Uh, it's done transparently. So there's lots of benefits of this um, to all the large enterprises. And I what I and the scope of your team, dev team, to get things done expands. Right now, now you can get your job done because you have access to the code. You have access to contribute something uh, and make enhancement. And that really drives a cultural change more than anything else, right? And, and I think certainly it's aligned to the values. I think, you know, organizations sometimes have this value, but they sometimes need this kind of mechanism to inculcate those values into the way they do software. So I think, I think in a source, I'm very excited about it. I think it's very fundamental this, to this way of doing things. So what is stopping a lot of these organizations? Um, certainly, uh, lack of awareness, uh, organization silos, a lack of clarity of what those rules are for inner source. What, like I said, there's some haze in us. What does inner source really mean? How is it different to open source? Um, and then, you know, you have your legal aspects, your support conditions, your vendor contracts, your liability, transparency that we discussed. That's what's kind of stopping people. And we need to provide some solutions for people to go up over these hurdles. So one pattern certainly is the inner source portal, and that is a recommend something that we have as well. Um, and that is something that addresses the first two, but the other stuff I think is, can be held, handled multiple ways. It can be a policy, contract, licenses, but in my opinion, just as in the open source world, I think the licenses is the cleanest way to do this, right? Um, and the cleanest way to define uh, what the rules are. Uh, clearly for inner source and what inner source means. Um, and um, yeah, and, and Creative Commons does a very interesting thing with this. They just don't have a legal definition. They also have a human readable definition, which is kind of the kind of thing we need to do with inner source as well. And then with transfer pricing, that's a separate discussion, but I just want to mention it here. Uh, we need a good model for that, for chargeback, um, for distributing that cost. Um, in the open source world, um, I was, uh, you know, when I was working uh, in Sri Lanka, I was advocating for open source and we used to had to educate people about open source licenses. One of the things that made it easy was the fact that, um, you know, you, you eventually very popular open source license bubbled up. GPL3 was GPL2, not easy to explain legally. However, made it some, a construct that people could easily understand eventually right so because popularity bred more familiarity and and if we had a similar set of common inner source licenses it'd be easier to understand the rules so um the other thing about um the advantage is, is easily referenceable there's a case history behind some of these uh, open source licenses there are organizations like uh, software freedom conservatory that uh, run cases against violations of gpl so it is legally protected. There's a well-defined knowledge base around it. And right now, as I see, there's a use of pattern, but every organization might implement that pattern specific to themselves. And that is costly. Uh, we discussed earlier uh, that it, you know, engaging the legal teams is challenging. It's, uh, it's not easy always because, uh, and getting them engaged on this problem statement, um, it's a technical problem statement. Um, so if we can do it, you know, in a common way and then share it across and have some well-defined licenses, I think it will help everyone. It will be, be low cost to the organization and it will be easy. It will make the rules very well defined 
um, to help adoption. Okay. Um, so, uh, what are how are there some differences? You can't just say uh, the there is ambiguity between open source and source. There are differences, and these differences come because of the boundary conditions. Uh, around inner source. Um, so the application open source way within those boundary conditions. So um, I think one thing is, what is the boundary? Where is the boundary? Uh, and sometimes that differs, um, right? And so that could be just your employees. That could be the organization and its subsidiaries. It could be the organization and its vendors. So there are different sense of boundaries. And so I think sometimes we need to encapsulate that into the license as well and those variances. The other could be an in, uh, Incentive mechanisms, when you do in a source, you don't own the code, the organization owns the code. Um, so uh, the mechanisms of ownership need to be applied a different way and copyright. You don't, the author does not, as employee of the organization, doesn't own the copyright, the organization does. So you need different mechanisms for copyright, um, different mechanisms for attribution. Um, and sometimes interestingly in the financial domain, we also find this whole anti-attribution pattern don't, sometimes you don't want to be affiliated with that code that you share because you don't want any liability. Uh, so you really want a zero warranty on that. So that's sometimes we also find that. Um, and and particularly in the financial domain, it's security is secu securing company, custom assets is the most important thing. And there's a very steep boundary uh, that we have. So, um, profiling of code so making sure none of this goes out uh, no visibility is there um, it's a good thing uh, but uh, for our customers and for everyone but also in terms of collaboration it, it makes it quite hard uh, and then finally wa warranty and liability uh, i think as, as i mentioned these things in terms of we are sharing internally now there is a governance there's an organized corporate here uh, what if something goes wrong with somebody else who's using your code uh, who's who's really liable for that? So I think these things need to be well defined uh, in sort of uh, terms, um, and this is particularly a license are particularly ac acute at the periphery of the organization when we're working with vendors, when you're working with maybe the subsidiaries uh, and so forth. Um, it may be less so within the organization, but it still is good to have a legal framework around it. Um, and we went about this exercise uh, in the SIG group in FinOS um, by having a poll uh, with different people on what should be the way forward. Uh, originally, we want to create some common licenses, but then we found there's a lot of variances. Uh, and then the best of all of license user, but right now we had a license generator. So we created a license generator for us to create those different options um, and create this initial set of clauses. Uh, so we went through the typical open process within uh, the SIG and we came up with an initial MVP. Uh, and I'm going to give you a demo of this MVP. Uh, and the key things that we had, we had scope, we had boundary, how do you risk distribution, how do you do attribution, the authorizing body, it could be OSPO, it could be in source community, uh, and how do you handle uh, warranty liability. And interestingly, a large language models also we kind of factored in because we feel that this will be, be very something that will impact licensing moving forward. In the open source world, you, I think, have this problem that now um, the licenses say attribution, but if the large language models are processing that data and then generating stuff based on that data and not attributing, you have a break in attribution, right? So um, I think in inner source world, you have a much more likelihood of governing this effectively, while it's very hard to do that in open source. How am I doing for time? Um, okay. So um, I'm just going to show you a demo uh, of this now. Uh, let me just switch to that. Okay. So it's a very simple piece of code. Um, I think intentionally simple right now because you you should uh, right now it's not been not a service. It's something that you can take. Um, it's constructed by aggregating license clauses together. Um, and uh, what what we want is that you can download it, 
you can modify the clauses uh, for your organization and then apply it. But really, at the end of end of this exercise, we want people to share back and say, what are those common clauses? And then come to a common set of licenses. Like in Creative Commons, they actually have 11, but you can, you can choose through which ones you pick. So we want to get to that point. We're not ready yet. Until then, we have a tool that can help you create a license. So here's an uh, example. Again, I just want to check if you're seeing my browser window um, on the license, or are you still seeing the slide? Uh, yes, we can see your um, browser window. And uh, I'm just going to uh, see if you might be able to wrap up in uh, a minute or so, uh, because we have a couple of questions as well for the talk. So we want to make sure. sure. I'll be very quick with demo. So basically, you put your thing, your name, you might say what you want in terms of scope of protection. You might say what is the boundary that you have, right? Uh, you might say territory if you need it. Uh, you might say um, I don't want this attribution to the authors. You might say I like uh, redistribution is allowed. You might say what you want to do. You might actually say I don't want LMS to access this. There's some sensitive data here. I don't want it processed, right? Uh, and you can say which is the authorizing body for exceptions. And then say, I can, um, in terms of warranty, maybe I want to do as is, or you want to do secret. You might, in an organization, you probably are going to be held to do the security fixes at least. So you might say, I will do the security fixes. So, and that creates a simple license document, uh, which tells you what you chose. And then it gives the legal definition of that. You would pick, uh, if you can just you know, have a review and then you can download it. And it so in uh, MD file, which you can then incorporate in your project. So I'm hoping to later on also incorporate this is in backstage. We have um, a, a code base that is open for people to join, and uh, we do welcome you to join um, this. So just getting back to the presentation. In summary, I think we do need a good licensing strategy uh, in the resource world. I think it'll help with adoption when people understand the rules clearly. Um, I think. LLMs might make it actually more important and drive inner source more. Um, and I just want to call to action to contribute to join us to contribute to this code. Uh, we want more input. I'm definitely very keen what Dirk is doing in terms of transfer pricing and how we can and ownership, how we can incorporate that into this. Still at early stages, so there's a lot of really help that we need to make it better. That's it for me. Thank you.